Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great today, as always. Uh, that was Closing of the Year off the Toys um, movie. Uh, it was a Robin Williams movie back in 1992. Uh, great soundtrack, by the way. I, the movie I have yet to be able to finish all the way through without falling asleep, uh, but did actually manage to listen to the soundtrack a great number of times, even own it. Uh, yes, Dan Radio Style, uh, we are doing When Should I Give Up on My Manifestation? I don't like uh, doing things in the negative, so this is really going to be actually more in the positive, uh, just phrasing it that way to kind of get the question out there for those of us that are wondering, how long do I keep trying to do this? How long do I keep imagining and imagining and imagining with the hopes of somehow manifesting something someday? When do I give up? When do I finally say, ah, I'm done with this nonsense? That's a great question. Uh, if one, it's going to come into a, a number of uh, number of things are going to come into play here. Obviously, when we have gone far enough, your belief is really what's going to ultimately uh, win the day in the end. So how strongly you believe that you want this manifestation to occur, that you're on the right track, that this is something that really matters to you, that's important to you, that and just the whole concept of, of how this manifestation works is your belief in that whole process needs to be taken into account. If you're shaky, if you're doubting it, okay, maybe maybe giving up is something that might be worthwhile, or I might actually phrase it more like maybe we um, save that manifestation for something um, a little bit down the road. Maybe we work on something a little easier. If you're totally just giving up on this concept altogether, all right, well, you got to totally start at the basics. I mean, go back to some of the Manifestation 101, some other things we've talked about. Anya Vivarelli talks about a lot of really, really great stuff that um, will get you back into the basics. Uh, certainly, Neville Goddard is a great one to read. Read more of him. Read more Esther Hicks' Law of Attraction. Kind of get those two together and working together. Maybe you'll get a larger understanding. That all being said, if we're past the basics and we know this stuff basically works, but we're having a hard time getting it to work for ourselves... That's kind of where I'm dealing with this at, uh, or coming from this, uh, coming at this from. Let's try that. Well, that that'll work for us. Um, so yeah, your belief in this whole concept is going to be key. Now I will say, um, giving up is not going to necessarily keep it from happening. First off, if you've put enough energy uh, into your uh, what do they call it? Energetic escrow. I forget what the law of attraction calls it. Something with escrow. Um, if you've put enough energy towards it. Actually, honestly, giving up sometimes is sufficient to make it happen because you get out of your own way. You stop worrying about it. You stop focusing on the fact that it's not there. You stop kind of sabotaging yourself every step of the way by letting go. Just letting go and letting it happen. You've already done so much legwork. Let it work for you. I'm telling you, there's a lot of ways you can prove this to yourself. I can never prove it to you, but work on some of the basics. Work on some of the basic manifest uh, manifestation techniques, the imaginal work. And you will start to see things happen in your life. Again, just I want to keep reiterating, I want to keep hammering that point home because that is extremely important. But when we finally get to that point where we're like, ah, I don't know, maybe I should just give up on this, maybe I should let it go, uh, there's another factor that I want you to kind of take into account. And I'm going to bring this up because I think it's, uh, it's come up on a few places recently for me, and I think it's uh, extremely important in our spiritual development. So I've talked about chakras in the past, and there's, of course, seven of them. There's supposedly a 12-chakra system, too, but I generally deal with the seven. Um, from chakra three, soloplex, solarplex, sorry, to chakra four, your heart. They consider the movement between those two chakras to be the great leap. So what I mean by that is when you're in the third chakra and when you're operating in life and you're working on aligning your chakras... What or just even people that haven't spent any time working on their chakras, your lower chakras are kind of the ones that deal with the physical world and really for the most part are the ones that are kind of more turned on uh, in life for us because we're constantly dealing with physical things. So it's the ones that we pay more attention to. Uh, the lowest chakra obviously is kind of sex drive and, and all these things, so obviously that plays a big part. But the third chakra I want to focus on because it's the gut feeling. When I'm having a gut feeling about something, that's coming from your third chakra, and that generally deals very well with uh, the physical world. When we get to the fourth chakra, they call it the great leap because that's the point when you start to feel things. Something feels. It's calling you from that arena. So you feel so strongly about it that you will have to do it, that you are going to go down this path, even though you don't necessarily have any physical evidence to suggest you're going down the right path, 
You're going to go down it anyway because it feels so strong. It's going to drive you insane if you don't. So that needs to be taken into account. If that is part of your drive for why you're trying to manifest what you try to manifest, maybe it's your specific someone, uh, maybe it's a specific job that you feel very called to, and it's something that you're reaching out to. You're trying this new approach. You're maybe career-wise going down a whole different path, kind of similar to like I work IT as my normal job, and here I am doing YouTube stuff right? Kind of that thing. Like, I feel a calling to be doing this. And it's a pretty strong feeling. Um, Outside of that, there's not a whole lot of physical stimuli that are telling me, hey, dude, keep doing what you're doing. I mean, I I got some people here and there that are chiming in, but I get that just talking to people too, right? So I don't necessarily need to do these efforts four nights a week or taking, you know, two and three hours of my little bit of free time that I have. I'm doing it because I feel like this is something that is one, going to lead to bigger things. Two, that I'm actually making a difference in the world. And three, I'm going to keep doing it. I don't know when the time is to stop. I don't think ever because I know the results of my manifestations. I know how the laws work. So I'm applying them and I know the results will come. And two, I actually feel good when I'm doing this, when I believe in this. Um, One other really, really important question to ask yourself, and I've used this to answer a lot of questions uh, with manifestation, with is this even a good thing to try to manifest? Um, How should I feel about so-and-so? Should I keep going for this job? What do I think about my boss? Blah, blah, blah. All these things. Really important question to ask yourself. What would love do? Seriously, what would love do? Especially those of us that are uh, trying to manifest relationships in our lives, right? What would love do? And I'll tell you what, nine times out of 10, the answer to that question is the answer that you need to pursue. And generally speaking, love does the thing that uh, gives us wings, gives us freedom, doesn't necessarily put an anchor on somebody else, gives other people freedom, allows uh, growth, allows free will, allows for a lot of things when a lot of times our egos get frustrated because so-and-so doesn't like me and I want to push so-and-so away so so so-and-so can feel the pain that I'm feeling right now, that's really not what love does. Love doesn't do that. Uh, Love, God, universe, soul, whatever whatever example of that you would like to um, think of mentally, keep that in mind. For those of you that have kids, you have a great example of unconditional love. You love your children beyond words unless you've got some sort of horrible rascal of a child, right? And then maybe it's questionable. Most parents I've ever met seem to really, really appreciate their children or at least love their children. Appreciate's probably not the right word. But you guys love. The depth of love is insane. Uh, for those of us that don't have kids but have had pets, I know people with parent, uh, parents hate when we say, ah, I've got a dog. That's the same thing as having a kid. I know it's not. But for someone that's never had kids, ah, it's pretty darn close, right? That's like a step in that direction where this thing matters to me so much, I'd, I'd try to save its life without thinking twice. You know, like, it's a lot of that, and it loves us. It's a great example of loving us unconditionally, so we get that experience as well. So follow your feelings. If it's a great leap scenario, your heart's going to tell you. You can back away. Back away all you want. And if it's a follow your feelings moment, it will drive you insane as you back away and you won't feel balanced. You won't feel harmony. You won't feel happiness when you're making that step away. You'll actually, it'll bother you. It'll bother you to the point where you're like, ah, screw it. I got nothing to lose by going for it. Another thing I kind of want to bring up, and this was me when I was younger, when I was growing up. Uh, Back in the day when we didn't have like Google Maps and all this great stuff, we actually had to get directions or uh, what some of us will probably remember Thomas Guides was something we used to have where you'd carry around like road maps in your car that you could navigate to wherever you were trying to go. Those days, I had a funny little rule where when I was driving someplace and I started getting that feeling like I was lost and I was going the wrong way, I had a rule where it was like, all right, give it five more minutes because within five minutes, you're probably going to see that turnoff that you're looking for or that exit that you're looking for or that, uh, that uh, bu- business on the side of the road that you're looking for. And what my point is behind that is oftentimes when we're almost there is when we feel the strongest to quit. So also keep that in mind. If you're feeling this strong feeling like, ah, I just don't want to keep doing this, you're probably closer then you realize. And I'm not trying to talk you into staying on the path and staying focused, though that's probably a good idea because you're watching these shows, you're paying attention to manifestation techniques, you're working on these principles and practicing them. So yeah, probably a good idea to stick with it. But 
It's always your choice. Never, ever, ever trust anyone outside of yourself. Anyone. I've done other shows about not letting people kick you on the side, you know, kicking you sideways because they don't think it's possible doing what it is you're doing. Or whatever the case is, follow your heart, follow your feelings, follow your dream, and you will get there. No one gets to their dream by giving up, ever. I mean, like I said, sometimes by getting out of your own way, it can speed up the process. But generally, as a rule, pursuing your dream is what got you to that place to begin with, where when you let go, you finally got out of your own way. It was doing the work. It was pursuing the dream that actually made that possible. So again, most of us are not going to end up uh, owning our dreams without putting in a little legwork, and you're not going to become good at manifestation without questioning the crud out of it. Like, you will doubt yourself numerous times, I promise. As you get better and better at this, that level of doubt disappears very, very drastically. Like, very drastically. And then you reach a point where you're like, I just know it works. So by doing the work, I know it will happen. It's not an issue of if, it's an issue of when. And when is an easy thing to deal with. Because if it's going to happen three years from now, I can extend it out for uh, like a couple of the things I'm trying to manifest. If it doesn't happen for five years, okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. It'll probably happen much, much, much sooner than that, but I'm okay. It's that important to me. It matters that much to me, and I know I'm going to love it that much. Uh, it, it, I already do, for that matter, because it's already a part of my world. I'm already seeing examples of it. So keep pursuing. Keep going for it. And again, when you're almost there, you're going to question it. Trust me. It's going to happen. Follow your heart. Listen to your feelings. Listen to your heart. Listen to where you'd like to go. You know the rules. You know manifestation, imagination, and law of attraction. You know all these things are, are playing together. You know, you know you're playing, playing by the rules. So just keep stepping forward. Inch by inch, like I've said before in other, other videos, it's kind of like walking into a dark room where you know the light switch is on the other wall. You know there's some stuff in between you. So inch forward. Take a couple small steps. You might bump into a couple things, but if you're not just running along, you're not going to hurt yourself, right? You feel that table. You're like, ooh, there's the table. Okay, cool. Ooh, ooh, there's the couch. Okay, cool. Oh, there's the dang light switch. Sweet, right? So kind of uh, keep at it, keep following, and, and you will be amazed at the results. So when should I give up on my manifestation? It's your call. But if you want to manifest, sometimes you just got to keep at it, got to keep working towards it, and you'll make it come true. Stan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is enjoying themselves. I hope these are uh, helping you to some degree. Uh, and we're going to be going out with Semisonic Closing Time. And, uh, oh, yeah, feel free. Uh, please contact me at danradiostyle at gmail.com. Also, I will be hooking up with uh, Agnes... Uh, today's Wednesday. So in like three days, we're going to be doing our recording. So if you've got questions uh, that you would like us to bring up, even though I've already emailed her uh, with our core questions, uh, certainly some additional questions would be awesome. And for the good news stuff, if you got any good news stories you want to share with me, also make use of that same email, danradiostyle at gmail.com. And uh, you can very easily share any thoughts or news stories. Give me the link too, please. I had someone that shared a story and I actually ended up sharing the wrong one. Um, because I didn't have a whole lot to go on. So lessons learned all along the way. But anyway, closing time, semi-sonic, Dan Radio style. Closing.